We had a little scare in yesterday's practice for the Baltimore Ravens, and we were not feeling good. But today, we got a huge sigh of relief, and we got some bonus news, too, that we weren't even expecting. So, team, keep it clean so we can get into it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video, not a single update, not a single live stream. I don't want you missing nothing. And also, leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It goes such a long way. Y'all don't even be realizing it, but y'all help out a lot when y'all do that. I appreciate y'all y'all coming through every single day sharing your thoughts in the comment section i appreciate y'all coming through every single day being positive i appreciate you coming through every single day showing support without further ado because i know you're like engraving you're talking too much let's get into it kyle hamilton yesterday oh he gave us one of the biggest scares of the offseason because the report said there was a scary moment late in ravens practice all pro safety Kyle Hamilton went down with what appeared to be a left leg injury. Now, Jeff Zrebic, that was a report from Jeff Zrebic, by the way. He said all pro safety. He could have said super duper Kyle. He could have said the best safety in the world, but he chose all pro safety. A modest description of Kyle Hamilton. But anyway, continuing. He said um, he went down with what appeared to be a left leg injury. Hamilton was down for a bit before limping off. Ultimately, he walked back to a locker room with a bit of a limp. And that was scary. That, that, that was very scary. Jameson Hensley said pretty much the same thing. He said, Raven safety Kyle Hamilton left the field about 25 minutes early with what looked like a left leg injury. He walked off the field with a trainer on his own power. On the play, Hamilton ran up to contest a pass and fell to the ground. It didn't appear there was any contact. That was the scariest part right there. It was a no contact injury and he was limping. But yesterday we did get hope because they said he walked off under his own power. Now, that is usually a telltale sign that, OK, they may be out for a little bit, but they'll be back soon enough. It's when they got to walk off with the trainers. That's really usually when it's like, oh, it's really bad. But today our, our frowns got turned upside down because this from Jeff Rebick, it says, uh, it appears that safety Kyle Hamilton, while not practicing, he was on the far field doing some running and stretching with a member of the athletic training staff, seemingly an indication that the Ravens dodged a bullet there. Ooh, they really did. They really, really did. Um, and then it was confirmed by John Harbaugh. He said that Kyle Hamilton is good. He's going to be out for a little tiny bit, but uh, that he has a minor sprain. And my goodness, man. My goodness, because... Kyle Hamilton is one of the best players just on this football team in general. In my opinion, he is the Baltimore Ravens' best player on defense. And in my opinion, it's really not close. Just because of how valuable he is, just because of everything that he does for the Baltimore Ravens, he is the best player on the Baltimore Ravens' defense. He brings so much to the team, and now he's stepping into more of a leadership role. So Kyle Hamilton is going to be even better than he was before and even more valuable than he was before. And, oh, did we mention that <laughs> after this year he's eligible for a contract extension? Not saying they're going to do it right here, right now. They're probably going to play it out. They're probably going to try to stretch it out as much as they can, do the fifth-year option and all that stuff. But Kyle Hamilton is going to make a lot of money when his time comes. But we are so glad that Kyle Hamilton is good. He will be good. Now, we call him Super Duper Kyle for a couple of different reasons. One, because he can do everything uh, from anywhere on, on the field. He can play every single position on defense. And if he probably wanted to play offense, he could probably do that too. But from defense, he does so much. But do you remember last year? Because this seems to be uh, what it was. I'm not sure if it was the same leg or not. But remember last year when he got hurt? What was it during the Rams game, I think? First, the, the, the Rams, I mean, the Ravens were playing some real good defense. Kyle Hamilton went out. That defense went, <laughs> just like, that was that. So, with Kyle Hamilton, I remember being just so worried when he went down with an injury in that game. I think it was the Rams game. Um, and then I think he missed maybe one game. But then he came back. He came back, like, right away. And then I was thinking, all right, well, Kyle Hamilton, he's out. So, maybe with, with him being out, maybe he, he done missed the game. And um, how's he going to be when he gets back? Is he going to be full? No, he was a baller. He, he, he was balling. He was doing his thing. There were no setbacks. There were no limitations. The, he was just fine. So, wh whether it was the Rams game that he meant, maybe it was another one. Maybe I'm getting my games confused because y'all know my memory's messed up. But I remember when Kyle Hamilton went down, and then he ended up missing the game. And then when he came back, he was just – just as good, maybe even better than he was before. So he got, he's young, 
So he, he got that healing power in his legs, that super duper healing power in his legs. So it seems as if that same healing power is still right there. But shout out to Kyle Hamilton. On a serious note, we are glad that uh, he is good. And like Jeff Zrebic did say, the Ravens really dodged a bullet. The news about Kyle Hamilton wasn't the only thing that us as Ravens fans were celebrating today because Rashad Bateman, who has been a heavy topic of conversation, he returned to practice today as well. But hold up now. We can't celebrate all the way yet. We're happy that he's back. And that's a start. And Harbaugh talked about that it's going to be a ramp up period for Rashad Bateman. But uh, this came from Jonah Schaefer. He said, uh, Rashad Bateman's day was short. He was half speed in wide receiver drills because he still got the little midsection injury. Uh, and it didn't look like uh, he didn't look right uh, in his lone one on one rep. Uh, then he took the pads off later. So he had a short day. You know how when you go to school and you end up having a half day. So when you have a half day, you do everything halfway. Because you're like, oh, I'm about to get off anyway. But with Rashad Bateman, he was hurt. So that contributed to him having that half day. I'm not sure if this was the plan going into practice or it was one of those things where they just were monitoring them, see how, how he was doing. And they were like, all right, babe, let's, let's go ahead and cut it short for the day. You, you go ahead and chill out. Um, but so it is good that he is back. But he's obviously still dealing with, again, Harbaugh said it wasn't serious. And Harbaugh did say he will be back soon. And he is back, but he ain't like back, back all the way yet so they got to be patient uh with Rashad Bateman and again hopefully whatever the injury is the mix, midsection injury hopefully it's not anything that lingers hopefully this thing can get cleared up pretty soon and he can get back to being the Rashad Bateman that we are hoping he really comes through to be this season. How does that saying go again? You look good, you feel good. Well, Chubby's got me doing exactly that. And you know what? I want to feel even better, so I'm dropping an additional button on him. I'm wearing my Chubby's Friday shirt right now. And it's not only lightweight, but it's comfortable as well. You see, Chubby's is where comfort meets game day vibes. So whether you want to go to a sports bar, you headed to brunch, you tailgating, or you're on your way to whatever stadium, Chubby's will have you looking right no matter where you at. When we heavily invested in the game our team got us stressing out and we screaming jumping up and down or crying whatever the case may be we want to look good while we're doing it now first let me tell you about the shorts boom shakalaka my favorite part of them especially if you're going to be wearing them for tailgating they're stretchy these original stretch shorts put chubbies on the map for a reason they're available in four inch five and a half inch and seven inch inseam length so it just depends on how much of those beautiful thighs you want to show off when you're wearing them and when you pair those shorts with these friday shirts from chubbies oh Oh, it's game over, my friend. On the channel, we always talk about how we love versatility. That's exactly what these shirts bring. From casual button downs to more retro inspired prints, these shirts are built for acting a little crazy, or if you want to chill out, either way, they built for a good time. Now, since I know you know this looks really, really good, imagine how much better it will look on you. But how can you get your hands on some Chubby's clothing? Well, you know I'm gonna let you know. And would you look at that? For a limited time, our friends at Chubby's are giving our listeners 20% off with promo code engraving at checkout at chubbyshorts.com that's 20 percent off your order with promo code engraving support our show and tell them we sent you elevate your game and shop now to discover why chubbies is the mvp of men's shorts and gear don't just watch the game live it in chubbies so so far how y'all feeling about kyle hamilton them dodging that bullet and then rashad bateman being kind of like halfway back how y'all feeling let me know in the comment section and something else i want to hear from y'all on is tj Tampa. This was great. A nice surprise, too. Says, per the Ravens roster, rookie cornerback TJ Tampa is no longer on the physically unable to perform list. He's listed on the regular season roster. So TJ Tampa is officially in the building. No more pup list. He recovered from his surgery and he was practicing today. So I, th I think he was looking around. TJ Tampa was like, man, all right, Nate Wiggins out. Arthur Millette, out. Hold up. Sanusi Kane, out. Wait a minute. I've been out for a minute. Trayvon Mullen just got back. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me get back, too, because I got to fight for a spot. I mean, he to me, he's a lock to make the roster. Was he like a fourth-round pick, I believe? He's a lock to make the roster. He, he ain't going nowhere. But for him to get in the mix at cornerback, for him to be battling for playing time, for him to be battling for reps, especially with the versatility that he has as well, then, yeah, he will want to get out there ASAP. But we are glad that he is healthy, and now he's officially good to go. Ooh, this kind of took me down memory lane because the Baltimore Ravens said that Jason Garrett, 
that he was actually out there at Ravens practice today. And I just wonder, because Jason Garrett was actually the first choice back in uh, 2008 when the Ravens were looking for a new head coach. Jason Garrett was their first choice. John Harbaugh was not the number one option for the Baltimore Ravens. But Jason Garrett was like, no, uh, I'm going to go ahead and chill here in Dallas. I'm going to probably end up being a head coach here soon. And so they moved on to John Harbaugh. And it obviously worked out. Um, but I, I just wonder how the Ravens would have been if Jason Garrett would have ended up being head coach instead of Hobbs. Now, we got so much positive news when it came to current injuries, but let's backtrack a little bit and talk about some past injuries. And this next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie about Lamar Jackson's past injuries. He said, Aang Raven, I'm getting ready to start college soon. Wish me luck. Man, you, you don't need no luck. L luck ain't even a thing. Look, you are the same person that lost 160 pounds. That's not by luck. That's by hard work. That's by dedication. So you already know what it takes to get a tough task done. So college ain't gonna be nothing for you. I already know. But anyway, continuing, he said, um, now that we are past Lamar's contract saga, yes, we, we made it. We, we made it. Um, and it's, it's only been a year, but we made it. I remember um, back last year, like really not even last year, the last couple of years, all the stories, all the rumors, all of this and the that, every single update that was done, everything that was reported on it. Oh, it, it got so ugly. But then I look around, I, I look at guys like Tua. I, I look at guys like Joe Burrow. I look at guys like Trevor Lawrence. I look at all these other quarterbacks that they got their deals without no drama, without any issues, without any problems, and they got paid. And with Lamar Jackson... A lot of them haven't even accomplished half of what he's accomplished in this league. And they still got their deals, no problem. They still got their deals, no question. They still got their deals, no issues whatsoever. Nasty business. But anyway, continuing. He said, um, now that we are past Lamar's contract saga, I think we can talk about the elephant in the room now. And I'm genuinely curious what you think of this. Do you think that it's at all possible Lamar was maybe exaggerating his injury or slow recovery time uh, for, let's say, business purposes. Love to hear your thoughts. Like Lamar said in the last weeks of those seasons, I'm out. Ooh, that's a really, really good question. That's a that's a great question. And was he exaggerating his injuries? I don't think he exaggerated his injuries because he did have injuries. Could he have played? Hey, who knows? There were a lot of fans. There were a lot of analysts, a lot of people in the media who said, oh, no, that, that's stuff that Lamar Jackson can play through. Like Michael Vick even said, hey, Lamar, put on a brace and play. So, And that was a, the same sentiments of a lot of other people, too. A lot of people said, oh, I had that injury before I played through it, this, that, and a third. But were those people in serious, heavy contract negotiations with their team? And that I do think it was a part of negotiations, to answer your question. Reason being because it wasn't like those Lamar Jackson got his contract last year, but it wasn't like the contract negotiations started last year. This had been an ongoing thing for years between Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson when it came to his contract. This had been a thing. And what I think happened, I do not have no knowledge. I don't have no sources, no plugs, no connects, no none of that. I don't. But what I think is that Lamar Jackson, he was telling them one number. Maybe they, they were telling him a different number. He was telling them his worth. Maybe they were saying, no, we don't think you're worth that much to our football team. So Lamar Jackson said, all right, cool. He played and did his thing, but then he got hurt. And I just my personal opinion, again, I don't know nothing. Ain't got no plugs, no sources, no connects. No, again, I'm an NFL outsider. But I think it was one of those things where Lamar's like, all right, I can show you better than I can tell you. So I think it, I think it was part of contract negotiation. I do think he was legitimately injured because he did he did have injuries. I mean, we saw it, but he was like, you know what, this team they don't want to have my back, and it's not even that I don't have that. They don't want to fully support me. They they they, they don't want to give me the contract that I deserve. They they want to say, oh, I'm not worth this. I'm not worth that. I'm, I'm not worth X Y and Z. Let's see how good you are without me. That's what I think. I think he was just trying to show them, trying to prove a point and doing some heavy, heavy contract negotiating. 